this, I will recount uh, some portions of last two lectures briefly and then go on to uh, define art, what really art is, and uh, to further specify uh, work of arts. What really are the work of arts to be able to specify? Um, what I'm saying is, uh, and this specification is fairly formal. And a uh, few things, I, since, since I didn't show the slides in the first two lectures, a few things I missed. <laughs> and uh, so, one is that I have drawn this distinction between Shar Purush, Akshar Purush, Sautam Purush, and they have speculated that Akshar is form, which is contentless, completely contentless. And, uh, it is with this form that we will, the help of this form that we look at the realm of arts. And uh, there are, this I did show, there are two fundamental forms. And uh, all, each of the, when you look at music, you other things, we involve these two fundamental forms. And uh, these are forms which have come, uh, which are extensively used in Indian antique traditions, in every disciplines, in philosophy, in other sciences, etc. These forms are used, and uh, they have uh, some justification from the uh, from the linguistic tradition. They seem justified. So one of the form is. Uh, these are, uh, wherever there is happening, whenever there is a happening, something happens, wherever we can call as happening, uh, there exists a akshar in that. Wherever there is happening. So, even in the sort of state of samadhi, something is happening, there ought to be akshar there. And uh, this, uh, these are, this Akshar uh, has two fundamental uh, senses of happenings in them. It makes two different forms. And uh, uh, every happening uh, can be conceived as a state of fear and another state of fear. Uh, and the transference between these two state of fears. Minimally, a happening can be seen as you know, something was there, something is now, and in between there is a akshara, which binds the two together and tells them apart also. Akshara keeps them apart as well as binds them. And uh, this form of transference, uh, so I had called a point traditionally uh, because it goes cognate with the uh, European reflection on on point, idea point in Lagnese and later people. Uh, this is, these are called halves. There are hundreds of halves which have been intuited and used, deployed in the Indian uh, intellectual tradition. Hundreds of them are deployed. And using these uh, halves, uh, certain antique power comes in analysis of any discipline analysis of any uh, phenomena. So these are Bharadhanvi Bhavas, or varieties of them. Uh, so this is some uh, a kind of happening or a, uh, or a form of transference uh, from one state to another or from one uh, uh, aspect to another aspect, etc. There is another form uh, which is called Bhavrathe tradition and where given the entity uh, this entity everything is punctuated by its extension uh, extension example would be the uh, podium is uh, can give uh, a sense uh, that there is something called podiumness. Some kind of podiumness, which is uh, 
there in a free podium. So the limit podium is recognized as podium. So uh, that there is a form given an entity, it returns a phantom of that form. This phantom is written. And uh, this phantom, it so happens for podium, uh, podiumness is where all it occurs in the world. Maybe some place looks like podium, is not does look like podium, but used as podium. All kind of uh, uh, occurrences may be there of this podiumness, which are uh, vague or uh, sort of not very, uh, this is uh, not very accurate. Uh, for instance, if we few words which are very clear to us, podium may be table chair for instance, or very clear words. So every chair would have chair necessary. Every uh, table would have table necessary. And uh, by getting the phantom of tableness, one can uh, intuit about uh, the table. Given tableness, one can always uh, design the table. Uh, from whatever we understand are the features which go with this tableness. Uh, so this uh, creation of uh, this phantom, this phantom occurs in our head very often. And it is classically uh, body. We put the body onto the world and posit something and look for its locations. If locations are not found, we design those locations in our imagination. We design and in case the locations of uh, such patterns are actually found in the world without any doubt, uh, that world is a settled reality. A settled reality is that where uh, uh, some class of phantoms can be seen uh, to be located in a category of reality, locations of those category of reality. Some phantoms are located like, like that. For instance, when we say substance, substance is also can be seen as we don't know what substance is. So the substance can be seen uh, through a, a phantom of location as uh, something uh, which is not located anywhere. So uh, which means the locus the size of phantom which is not located anywhere are the same as the size of uh, substance like space is not located anywhere time is not located anywhere etc etc and matter is not located anywhere and uh, so uh, this this way uh, we done exercise by which finding those kind terms which are uh, whose uh, who can become categories most kind terms categories of reality most kind terms don't become categories of reality and uh, where they get expectations uh, of uh, of constructing objects for their real realization. So there are uh, these two forms. One is a form of transference, another is a form of uh, extension, something which is very extended. Like if we have some phantom in the head, where all it occurs, in what formation, in what uh, features, etc., one moves over that. This pulling is imagination. And a mulling can be in such a way that there is an accurate location in the world that becomes a realistic ontology, real ontology. Whereas in artistic situations, that imagination goes on to realize that phantom. There is a phantom which say, for instance, uh, one has to render a melody. This melody, there would be certain phantoms of this melody which are being realized. While, mel while melody is being uh, rendered or experimented with. So these are two forms 
which we produce. Uh, and uh, these forms are, as I said, uh, behind the idea of propensity. And uh, another thing, uh, once these two forms are there, then we have the story of uh, Nagji, of uh, disembodiment and re-embodiment. The cycle of disembodiment, re-embodiment, denuding, and re-embodiment. This cycle is, uh, is involved in all arts. Uh, it's involved also in all other actions. But uh, we'll see why uh, specifically uh, in art. Uh, and uh, in this cycle, Then I had also said about two features of art, uh, which is uh, Sadhani Karan and, uh, and uh, also that no one should be involved in spectator. I introduced the spectator because spectator is not introduced in the story. What is introduced in the story is the memory, which is not there in the uh, Natisha, explicitly in the Natisha story, but so that's why they are complementary. Now, what really is art, we narrow it down, it is uh, re-embodiment of uh, reclaimed disembodied realm, reclaimed Vednas, it is a re-embodiment of that, finding a new body for them. And uh, if one looks at, uh, looks this way, so art in a sense, roughly becomes a removal of spirit from the body and moving over the spirit in imagination and re-embodying that spirit in some piece of metal and bring that. A piece of metal could be a sound, a piece of metal could be a body, a piece of metal could be a canvas or uh, anything. So that is, uh, there is a process of the removal from the body of spirit from the body. And this happens through two means. Either via uh, experience, whatever gets experienced can be, uh, spirit can be removed from that experience in memory. Whatever is action done, the spirit of action can be removed from that action and it will be in Smriti. So, uh, This is one condition for art to be there and uh, in specification of art. Now this removal is uh, can actually be of, uh, has several elements in it. One is when we perceive something uh, through our sense organ, uh, that table doesn't really occupy, enter my head. The metal piece of metal remains there. Certain removal of that table occurs in my head. Uh, that removal may have all the information the table has. That's a different issue. But there is, nonetheless, uh, when we recall elephant, elephant doesn't arrive. It's only the formation of elephant which arrives. So there is a removal which is perceptual removal. And then there is further whatever experiences there, say perceptual experience. That is reduced to uh, committed to memory and not in its vividness. Second, there is some thinning which occurs in the memory. And uh, then we sort of uh, uh, desire something. We build our experience according to our will. When we rebuild our experience according to our will in imagination, uh, there is further removal, at least removal from reality. And then when we cast this imagination into, through our sense organs into a work of art, that also is another removal. There are a variety of removals which happen. And through this removal, uh, how is truth conserved is a big issue. How is truth uh, made? I mean, how does art reveal reality? Through, uh, by doing so much of removals, still art is able to reveal reality uh, and has uh, claims of truth in it. 
how does that happen? There is uh, technically, what does it mean to commit something to memory? And usually three kind of processes uh, happen. Uh, the denuding of experience is either done by uh, emptying the content which is there in the sequence. For instance, skills. When we say skill is in memory, skills are in memory. Skill of thinking, skill of doing that, skill of seeing, etc. They are uh, some kind of cultures which come out of our memory. And uh, in while acquiring a skill, if a child is acquiring a skill to grip a, grip a thing, uh, and this gripping skill is uh, maybe hundreds of times child try to grip and eventually get a grip and work out varieties of grips and things, such things. They are all emptied into something called a skill, which is a formal structure. Uh, there is a lot of emptying of the experience into what we call as uh, realm of uh, meanings. Realm of meanings are like semantic, well, like memory, all general knowledge, etc. They are all of uh, this kind of uh, uh, so memory. And uh, we remember words, we remember shapes, we remember all kind of uh, knowledge, etc. Then there is one kind of memory which we are more familiar with, which is episodic memory, what happened in my life. That memory is also there. There also there is a uh, occurrence is empty. And uh, so there are uh, varieties of uh, things which populate our mind, uh, our memory, including Persona. Persona exists nowhere except in our memory. Anybody's person, our own person. It doesn't exist anywhere except in memory. Various relations, characters, and uh, even artworks, I say, places, languages, narratives, stories, maps, all kind of things, economy, polity, culture, social objects, all of them exist in our, our constructions in memory. And uh, this uh, constructions which are there in memory, they are recalled in uh, our imagination. Uh, they are the Icha Shakti is able to uh, recall them, and uh, with that Mune, we do the imaginative task and then change on to some work plan and uh, sort of get that to action. So, uh, Basically, when we are re-embodying, I'll come to imagination later, details of imagination. But uh, when we re-embody some spirits from the memory, from the smati, when we re-embody these spirits, uh, we, uh, we can study uh, types of uh, bodies which can uh, which satisfy the condition uh, that the work of art of the artist. We look for the next condition of the work of art which would satisfy uh, where and that is precisely which I said last time that uh, the human mind is fundamentally uh, uh, enclosed space. Human mind is a very hard enclosure. It's so hard, nothing leaks into it, nothing leaks out of that. Whatever experience go on, they go on in human mind. This hardness is actually one of the conditions for the possibility of art. Now there is certain body on which, uh, with which this hardness is instituted. This hard privacy of experience, hardness of the uh, sort of domain of witness. Only we can uh, witness our uh, undergoings in our mind. Others cannot. 
this hardness is very important. This isolated spectator, totally enclosed spectator, and uh, is very important because in this enclosure of mind, the spectacle is happening. The spectacle of perception, spectacle of imagination, spectacle of action, they are happening here. So all this Yana Shakti, Icha Shakti, Kriya Shakti are on display in this enclosure, which is our mind. They are disclosed on this. So we are looking into enclosure disclosure structures. But then uh, there is also uh, if uh, there is this solitary nest of witnessing, Latin is called it a windowless monad, and uh, uh, many philosophies also describe the philosophy also. This is Atman, and uh, only way that this uh, privacy of this spectacle which is happening inside. Uh, uh, how does one find a situation or a condition so that this spectacle can be witnessed by other people? I can't sort of uh, enter other's mind. I can't enter anybody's mind. Others can't enter others' mind. The way the freshness and the witness by which each of them have witnesses the spectacle of mind. Uh, nobody else can. So, how is it possible that this spectacle can be put into uh, display for us? Only way is if in material realm, in the material realm, we can find something, a body of a kind, which has, which is enclosure. In material reality, we have to find certain enclosures in which some other things can be disclosed. The imaginations can be disclosed. The private imagination can be disclosed. Suppose we find a womb. We are looking for a womb where uh, my imagination can be installed. What kind of uh, material formations would that be? So people will maybe there will be something like human being, maybe, who formations, material formations like human being to do this, uh, to witness this spectacular uh, experience which goes on. But can we find in reality or design or invent certain formations of matter which can harbor uh, imagination, content of invention, autonomously, independent of the creator, or whose imagination it is, independent of the creator, say there is a painter, imagine something, you have to find a piece of structures or uh, in matter where this imagination can be uh, sort of uh, harbored or anchored, so that this piece of matter can always disclose that imagination. So there are, uh, this is one has to invent enclosures. Without invention of enclosures, there is no art. Every uh, piece of art is enclosure. There are great varieties of enclosures, men has found. And uh, so, uh, Whatever is spectacular in our head, its re embodiment uh, leads to sort of uh, how to embody the spectacular, like that boy who has died, his character, his promise, his world, uh, how to put that uh, for uh, sort of public. For the benefit of the public, everybody can see what it is, what that person is. Is to find a body of canvas and uh, veins, etc. 
using that, one can put the spirit of that boy in this new body. So, uh, in fact, uh, all arts is one or such bodies which have a capacity to disclose imagination, independent of the person who is imagining. There are two kinds of uh, such enclosures which have been formed. And uh, this enclosure is also related to a property which we discussed while this, uh, yesterday. And that is uh, immersion. And uh, there is this, uh, we have to find material formations in which not only there can be uh, imagination, which is, uh, which can ride on it, can get hovered there, but also it can have uh, immersive condition. It should be enclosure. Uh, so that anybody looking at that enclosure gets immersed in it. Possibility of immersion is there. There are two kinds of enclosures, two kinds of this material formation. One material formation we can call as uh, synchronic. Synchronic is uh, happening in the same time, at the same time. Uh, chronos is a Greek term for it. Uh, duration. And synchrony is synchrony uh, uh, art forms are those art forms where. Uh, every part of that art is available at a moment. Those are forms whose every part is not available at a particular time, but it evolves over time in the performative arts. They are diachronic. They are spread in time, fundamentally. The enclosures are uh, spread in time, necessarily, for it to disclose. Whereas other where enclosures are not spent in time. Painting, sculpting, architecture are uh, sort of uh, synchronic arts because the parts are all available at once. Sculpture, the sculptures there at once. All parts are there at once. Though the spectator may take have to spend time around that. Spectator may spend time, but it is uh, the all parts of art which is required of enclosure disclosure are available at once. Architecture is also like that. Whereas in music, dance, and drama, you have uh, the disclosure happens over time, and uh, uh, there are these two broad types of enclosures in the world, diachronic enclosures and synchronic enclosures. Diachronic enclosures are usually body, human body. But it can be some other bodies as well. And robotic bodies or some other bodies are also possible to do uh, performance. And uh, or to enclose certain imagination in them as uh, autonomous as extensionally autonomous uh, work of arts. Though the enclosures may be diachronic and synchronic, even in a painting, what is disclosed inside can be diachronic. In fact, is necessarily diachronic. So the enclosure is uh, synchronic. What, what is disclosed in that would be diachronic. Similarly, 
like in music, etc., and closure is diatonic. But what is disclosed in that can be sthai uh, also, can be synchronic. So the interiors of these enclosures in which we ingrain imagination uh, can be uh, sort of uh, for a spatial form of art enclosures. It could be temporal. So there may be, uh, there is a painting of uh, the French Revolution, the entire revolution, the entire dynamics of that revolution is painted. Or uh, interiors are fundamentally of painting temporal. Similarly, interiors of music, dance, etc. are special. The interiors of painting, etc. There is uh, excess of uh, or uh, emphasis of icons in them. Icons are uh, bundles of uh, very potent bundles of meanings, the cultural meanings, etc. So. Uh, I actually need uh, something to So, uh, this could take the bus. So, uh, all this, uh, the interiors of uh, special arts are uh, iconic. That's what we recognize, the emphasis. It is a photograph. Whatever emphasis is given, that emphasis is, uh, uh, is iconic. That what is foregrounded, because uh, in finite details, Spend a lot of time looking at each of them. 
Instead, we have to look at more provisions which are 